Good lunch time here at the River House. Got out a bit late. Takes a while to get all this just right for you guys. Uh, it's Friday and it's the first time I have been out of the house since the end of that last video. I stayed away for four full days. Did some projects with Shay. Played a little Minecraft with Shay. Uh, just anything but here. We've uh, we've got the big C in my classroom now, so we shut down we shut down the high school. Kept the junior high and elementary running this time, but shut down the high school and went to remote teaching. But unlike last year, when we just produced packages of information and the kids got them at their own schedule, this year, uh, you know, they gotta they gotta log in. From the regular class schedule. Anyways, it uh, it's pretty stressful, pretty hard. Uh, not that sitting on my butt in front of my computer and uh, essentially doing the same stuff I would have done in person is strenuously taxing. But you know, you're required. It's it, it's more than just throwing stuff at them, right? You need to get them engaged. You need to get that information in their heads and. Um, it's just hard. So anyways, I opted to, to stay away from the whole thing and uh, just back back here now today. Kind of a, a scatter shot sort of day. You know, when we last last showed you, we had put in all of the insulation that fit in full base. Uh, we just, Danny and I just went and, and did it without without stopping to cut anything. So now today I hope to come back and cut and piece and fill in um, you know the slow stuff such as it was cut and piece and fill in everything there's a whole lot of picking up that's got to be due got to be due got to be done constantly doing it i suppose hoping to get the refrigerator charging station lined out a little better went and made myself another another one of these it's uh it's an old electric baseboard wall heater thermostat. In this case, it's just tied to an outlet. Um, I want to I want to put that down in there in the bottom. I I got a second light base, just some old junk, and I'll have two lights in there. That way, if one goes out, it's not you know necessarily catastrophic. But that way, uh, I just don't have a light running all the time. I've got a bunch more ties. You know, I went along there and I attached all my rafter ends to the wall. And at least for this section of wall, I've attached the, the wall to the other wall. Essentially to the foundation, right? Because this is the end of the house that might get a 100 mile an hour whomp of wind against it. So I'm going to tie everything down and then, like I said, I'm, I'm part way along there and I need to finish that end. I don't know whether I'll bother doing it over there. It's not really possible for that to, to get that full front, but there's probably some vertical suckage as the wind pulls over the top. So I have I've attached the rafter ends to the wall itself, which is probably perfectly adequate. I have not attached, you know, the wall to the foundation. I have not put those straps in. And I'll, I'll probably do it, but like half as many, something like that. So that'll be done. There's a few more verticals I need to get over there. I have got my studs hardware sheeting. Uh, you know, I, I do like to, to, uh, to support and, and try to buy local, especially if it's, you know, only, if it's only a few bucks more or less, then why not, right? Especially right now. So I've got, they've got some uh, building wrap, their own branded uh, building wrap. I don't know where they got it. Anyways, uh, they gave me a chunk of it, so I want to get that set up so that I can, I can at least have a, a quiet advertisement for for my particular lumber yard. I got the big beastie fire running. I want to revamp. I want to revamp this fan bar right here. Our two twenty fans, a thing. But then they'd have to have three wires coming off of them, right? 
Well, these are the most anemic fans on 110 I have ever seen. Again, it's just old heaters I took apart, old junk. So they don't push enough air sideways to get this heat out of this one pocket. And it's just going up and out. So that's a waste. I want to rework this fan bar so that it blows underneath this stove. A leisurely little puff. And then I've got a box fan to blow across it to try to better distribute the heat. That's probably enough. It's probably more than I can get done today. But I did bring food this time, so hopefully there'll be less of the standing around with the thumb in my butt trying to figure out, duh, what do I do next? Hopefully I'll keep my blood sugar up a little higher. Or, well, I don't know. I have no idea. I spent a lot of time standing and looking because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Then next on the project, we'll be starting some of the electrical stuff. I've got the Montana electrical code. It's, it's nothing compared, I'm sure, to where you live, but it's what we've got here. And so I've got to get that printed out, um, start marking out outlet spacing and switch locating. And I believe I want the tops of my switch boxes dead even at four feet so that I don't have to cut two sheets of sheetrock but I need to account for us my floor sheeting so I suppose I gotta make that decision it's probably 3 8 but you know it could be 5 16 as well I need to make that decision I guess and I suppose I need to make the decision on whether I'm gonna do rock wool or blown in fiberglass up on top though it's not super critical right now because I can't appear to get either So. But yeah, let's, let's stop talking to you guys and start getting it done. All right, so we're done with all the piddly crap. I have the studs uh, building wrap up there. So if nothing else, they can appear in the background. Eh. Right, free advertising in a pandemic. Nobody can get too grumpy about that. I don't think Danny's going to be super thrilled having it right there, but it was convenient for me. I did cut off the barricade part because I haven't used their stuff <laughs> so they're not on there I have got the fans reworked those down there pump some air look how anemic they are I mean I can there's nothing there don't know why but anyways they pump air into the bottom of this thing um, and kind of blow it out around the tub and then the big one is blown across the top. It shakes a bit because it's missing a blade. <laughs> Nothing but quality. Over here, I have the heat lamps reworked with just a scrap light fixture. Again, in a pure sign of quality, you'll notice took a cutoff wheel because the flary parts didn't let my the light bulbs I already had fit so off it came but that's in there I wish that was on the second level but the um, salvaged plug I put on it is too big to fit through the hole and, I mean I guess I could get the grinder and cut a hole but it's, it's probably good enough if it looks like it's gonna be too warm up in the top If it looks like it's going to be too warm up in the top, then I'll do something about it. But for right now, I'm not. And that thermostat is set at 40 degrees. So that should be okay. I have not yet hung any cut down insulation. I have cleaned up a little bit. But I think what I'm going to do is eat something. And then we're going to go upstairs and go to work. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Well, buy local. Well, it's the end of the day. I got all of it done. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. But I did get a bunch, so we are now fully pinned, right? And I've got the first layer of insulation on both ends, and yeah, we've got solid insulation all the way around that corner there. I've got a couple of hidden little pockets 
I need to squeeze some stuff into. All right, my wall box is here. This will be a, it's a closet wall box, although I'm not gonna put the closet in. Because if I put the closet in, it's a bedroom, and if it's a bedroom, I pay taxes on it. So, if we sell or adopt or something like that where I need a bedroom, I'll, I'll deal with it. Good Lord, this house is big. Anyways, that, unfortunately, is where I've got my uh, scaffolding from the outside. But I think if I lay on my belly, kind of wrap my legs around it, I can screw new scaffolding. They're like knees. I think I can screw new scaffolding knees to that stud on the outside and then I can take these loose and let them fall and then I can insulate those. Oh no, I lied. There's a little piece right there. Dang it. Yeah, a life mislived. I'm going home because Danny called and said, we got another, yep, we got another hidden pocket there. Called and said uh, that she and Shay are going to make um, eggnog French toast. And they wanted to know if I wanted some. What a dumb question. So I'm going home. Good morning, we're back. Uh, it's a little, a little chilly here today. It's kind of a winter wonderland outside. I'd show you, but that would mean opening the door. And we got a really loud train going by outside. Not sure why. I won't miss that definitely when the windows are in. Again, a little later than I would like, I uh, stopped off at the, the local Mennonite bakery and picked up some brand new, fresh out of the oven, still warm to the touch, donuts <coughs> for Shay for finishing his first chapter book. Um, young man's had a bit of a battle getting that reading thing down, but I, I think we've crested a hill and so definitely wanted to to give him some kudos there. And then the brown turd continues to be turd-like. Uh, you know that buyer's remorse? But uh, I dumped a can of, well, a partial can, go gum. I think it came in grandpa's stuff for his boat engines, but I, I put some of that in there. I, I don't know what to do with it, I think. Well first I gotta check the timing and then I gotta pop the hood at night and make sure that you know I haven't got spark plug wires that are arcing out. And then once those two things are done, then maybe I, I don't know, rebuild the carburetor, um, hit it with the Rizlone. You know, maybe Rizlone down the down the throat till she dies and let it sit for a day or two. I hope it's not like the dump truck where the camshaft flattened out. You know, I really was hoping I could use that truck to burn some 90-odd gallons of diesel-contaminated gasoline that I've got stored, right? From that fiasco where the tank had a crack inside between the two. But I'm pretty sure if I tried to get it to, to, to drink a gasoline-diesel mix right now, um, the net result would would be a, a truck that just simply would no longer run. So I gotta get it running better because I gotta get rid of that fuel and then maybe I can just pass the thing along. Anyways, enough whining. We got that end all done, the whole peak? I, I don't know what that part, the little, the little pointy part at the end of the wally bit. But we got that all insulated up. Now it is time to do this one. And so I have come across this whole wall tying everything together. Again, these are the walls that are going to get hit 
uh, frequently with the heavy winds. So I'm going to tie them together a little better. I've got some plates and, and basically if, if them trusses want to lift, they're going to have to to tear the whole the whole top of the wall apart. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a little something today. And I got the big C in my classroom. But I'm pretty careful and I'm very, very confident I already had it. So I think I think it's just the regular wintertime crud. And or a smoky fire here at the start. But. Anyways, I need to finish tying the rafters to the, the wall on that side and then finish putting my plates along on that corner over there. And then I guess we do the same thing we did before. We just insulate that end. Then I guess uh, really up next, you know, I'm going to have to spend a, a day with my thinking cap on and just, you know, there's just some, some planning stuff that have got to be got to be worked out a little bit and so you know we're just gonna have to to take some time and do that I guess I guess I could insulate those bays but I was really just gonna do that with the R30 that we bought up there and like I said um, you know mom had a little poke around and then I had a little poke around and I think I was really lucky and really smart to have bought all the insulation I did with that that giant load because there is very little of it around right now but that's fine right that's totally fine so let's uh, let's get that done this might be the last day's video because I might spend Sunday thinking and and possibly tinkering on the turd but we don't know so this is what I mean about holding them all together You'll notice up there, I've got, I got the big twisted rafter clips. And then these are my, my vertical uprights, right, that I've attached my siding to. And they're toenailed at the bottom. If that roof section wants to lift, it's got to pull all of this. And of course, the sheeting gives it tremendous strength. And the sheeting is toenailed down. We didn't... I didn't get it completely right. Normally your sheeting would go down an inch and a half and then it, you'd have a solid wall of connections all the way across the front tying it into the sill. But uh, yeah, in some cases I had none. In some cases I had three quarters. It's not perfect. Um, so what I'm doing is attaching it with metal clips. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that clearly. It's metal clips. This is just stuff that I inherited out of my grandfather's collection. Lord knows they are way more than what it really needs. I also will sometimes cut up. Okay, so these, all the big ones go right here because this is the one that's going to take that wind. But I had, a, I had a pile of these here as well, and I just took the angle grinder and I cut them off right there and there. And it, it only gave me four, four screw points, but still. Now, instead of pulling those toenails out, you got to pull those toenails out, and you've got to rip these, these vertical screws. I've only been using the inch and a half, and, and maybe when I do the vertical down, if I did, if I did the three inch sideways, it would obviously go out the siding. That's a that's not a good idea. But I've only been I've only been using these going down, and it's one of those things where I, I know this is perfectly adequate, but then my brain can't stop with that little tickle. It's like, yeah, it's perfectly adequate, but you know it'd be more adequate, <laughs> something twice as long. So I'll probably go through and throw in one three incher. And, and every one along there, just just so I, I can sleep better. But it's it's really held together with these, and so to rip them off vertically, you got to shear the heads. Um, shearing two of these heads, it's an awful lot. On top of all the rest, you got to rip apart. 
um, and then you gotta you gotta pull two of them straight out on top of those toenails which is you know the sideways down at an angle but yeah and then when I get to those points right there I throw a handful of small screws so that I've got two in the vertical two by fours and two in the horizontals and then because these two by fours are acting under tension I'm putting three of of the uh, the long screws up at the top and then two in, wherever the the rafter passes over so it's just gonna have to rip an awful lot off this is similar to what you would do for like earthquake stuff you know we're, we're the fifth highest rate of earthquakes in the nation Montana is but <laughs> knock on wood uh, we don't get the big ones like like the west coast does so I don't know exactly what their earthquake code would be I know it's similar lots of straps but I believe they have straps that run top to bottom big and then maybe in an X brace big like rolls of Simpson strong tie material and and obviously I I don't have I don't have that on here but I do have a double wall I've got double double sill plates and you know I've got big mono trusses this center wall is going to be plywooded so that'll be a, a strong back it'll, it'll get a sheet of plywood and then it'll get drywall on top of that so that'll be a, a massive strong back and then we're gonna flatten this top part of the ceiling by coming off straight so lots of bracing in there. I, I am obviously not an engineer. Oh, spooky, look at that. Ooh. Not an engineer, but overkill is underkill, right? So it really, it, really should be, it really should be good and strong. I know it's not necessary, but I'm strongly considering because when I put those braces in, how much it's stiffened up right and straighten those those rafters I'm strongly considering putting a row of of blocking I know it's not necessary but I'm strongly considering doing that the problem is I can't reach it so we'll see we'll see what actually happens I don't know if you noticed but I took the Franken camera apart again and I got rid of all the fuzzies how they got past the lens protector cap and the camera's lens I don't know it has a hard life Franken camera but she's back in focus so score there and I ended up punching out that corner and putting my thermostat switch up on top because as suspected it uh, it wasn't going off down on the bottom shelf even though that's where the light bulbs were it wasn't going off at all and things up on top were just unnecessarily warm so I had now have it on the shelf above and of course the light bulbs basically preheat that whole shelf which means the top is, is staying a little colder but uh, I know for a fact it's not going below freezing so got that problem licked last night all right that's it we are insulated up and over both sides and all the way around with the exception of a handful of places where the outside scaffolding is attached from the inside which seemed like a good idea at the time I also swept and picked up some and I should I should pick up a bunch more down below I'm gonna save all my cutoffs of the the rock wool because it can be torn to shreds and then just mix with the blown in fiberglass if that's what we're going to do and if not I'll just throw it away later I guess but it's all in it's all it's all definitely in just trying to think of other things I could do I need to run the cow spell and pick up what we've got of the big rough cut two by six and start flattening the ceiling up in here 
I could do that. There's a lot of work doing that stuff, putting the floors in on the areas where there's going to be floors. I don't, I don't have enough two by six. I don't think in that big stack at mom and dad's, but I got a bunch enough to make a good old honest try at it. Cleaned up a bunch around the saw. I found it was wet right there, so I, but it was all buried under dry sawdust, so I don't know if that was a an old leak we haven't successfully fixed yet, or a new one. As far as areas where I know there's a leak, there's one right here. Somewhere up there, there is a leak. But it's not much of one. I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, so I, I think I'm... What time is it? 5.30. I'm going to pick up some more down there. Maybe load the back of the truck with garbage for the dump. And call it a day. Like I said earlier, there's just no need. Probably I won't even come out tomorrow. Tomorrow will be getting stuff figured out at home. Um, making some calls and Spending some money, probably, either on insulation or uh, outlet boxes. I have to buy the boxes I've inherited, and I got a lot, aren't, aren't deep enough per code for outlets anymore. They're good enough for light switches, so we'll use them for light switches. And while this is the state of Montana, and since the power was never turned off at this location, technically I do not have to have this house inspected. If you can believe it or not, I could just do whatever I want to do and, uh, and just get on with life. But if it ever came down to selling it, it sure would be nice to have an electrical inspection on file. So I'm going to going to take out an electrician electrical permit and then I have one big question to ask them <coughs> I don't remember exactly what the code is but it says that your power box can't be any place that's like less than six feet and I want to put it someplace that's five foot ten and a half so I'm hoping I can get a variance for that if, if I can't get a variance for that I don't know what we'll do We'll have to find a place to put the power box upstairs somewhere, but I think we'll get a variance for that. I'd like it right down in that corner, down there in the cellar. Five foot eleven and a half. It's close, right? And maybe that's six foot two or six foot six or whatever it is. But I, I'm within an inch and a half of that, but I'm a, on the small side of an inch and a half. So I wanna I wanna get my electrical permit through so that I can get an electrical inspector and then uh, have them come out and answer that question because that's an important question but Yeah We're getting there and definitely appreciate you coming along for the ride out here at the river house